Hello, welcome to introduction to composites. This is the seventh week of this ongoing course and today is the start of this week. Over the last several weeks, we have discussed different aspects of composites. Specifically in the last week, we had started discussing how to predict different properties of unidirectional composite materials. Specifically, we had covered uh, how to predict density of uh, such composites their longitudinal modulus and also their longitudinal strength. And in the last uh, couple of lectures, we had also covered the prediction of transverse modulus of such composites that is unidirectional composites. Today we will continue that discussion and then subsequent in subsequent part of this week, we will uh, touch upon different other properties of uh, such unidirectional composites such as transverse strength, shear modulus, Poisson's ratio, thermal conductivities, different transport properties and other important properties. So, uh, we will start by uh, revisiting the uh, transverse modulus of a unidirectional composite. Now, what we had stated was that the halpin psi relation gives us that the transverse modulus of a unidirectional composite can be defined as is defined through this relation 1 plus theta eta times volume fraction divided by 1 minus eta volume fraction. And the results which we get from such a relation are fairly consistent with experimental data. So, this particular relation gives us a fairly good estimate of the transverse modulus of a unidirectional composite. And here the parameter eta is defined as E f over E m minus 1 divided by E f over E m plus zeta and where this parameter zeta is defined as twice of a over b, where a and b are the dimensions of the cross section of the fibers which are used in the system. So, I wanted to bring upon uh, some important features of this relation and how each of these parameters volume fraction, fiber uh, modulus, matrix modulus they influence the transfer modulus. So, we will do th that by looking at an example. So, consider the case that we have two types of fibers. Uh, so, we have glass fiber and we have uh, carbon fiber and both these composites have the same matrix material and uh, volume fraction could also be uh, at two levels. So, the first volume fraction would be 10 percent. So, V f is 10 percent and, and the other volume fraction which we could consider it could be 50 percent. And the matrix material for both these composites is common. So, it is the same matrix material. So, we are going to make four different composites, one with 10 percent glass fiber, another one with 50 percent glass fiber, third one with carbon fiber 10 percent and fourth one with 50 percent carbon fiber or graphite fiber. And the representative properties of different materials we are going to state is Young's modulus of graphite fiber, we say that it is 3500 MPa for uh, glass, it is 350 MPa 
and the matrix is the softest matrix and that is about 70 MPa. So, for each of these composites let us see what is the value of E t. So, we have to find E t for all these four different composites. So, we know that E f over E m is equal to 20, which is the ratio of uh, fiber. So, this is the 20 for. So, we will address this problem, but before I address uh, I wanted to say that there are some changes. I would like to change some of these numbers. So, this E c is 7000 MPa and E g is 1400 MPa. Okay. So, for these values first we calculate the ratio of fiber modulus and matrix modulus. So, it is 20 for glass and E f over E m is 100 for graphite graphite fibers. Okay. So, with that understanding next we compute this parameter eta. So, this is equal to E f over E m minus 1 divided by E f over E m plus 2. So, this is equal to 20 minus 1 divided by 20 plus 2 it gives us 19 over 22. And for the graphite system this works out to be 100 minus 1 divided by 100 plus 2 that is 99 divided by 102. Okay. So, now what we do is we compute the value of E t over E m this parameter and first we do it for volume fraction V f equals 10 percent. So, for that case E t over E m equals 1 plus theta eta V f divided by 1 minus eta E f V f and if it is 10 percent for glass this is 1 plus 2 times 19 by 22 into 0 0.1 divided by 1 minus 19 by 22 times 0 0.1 and that works out to be 1.28. So, this is for glass okay. and if we do the same thing for a graphite system. So, that is equal to uh, 1 plus 2 times 99 divided by 102 into 0 0.1 divided by 1 minus 2 into 99 over 102 into 0 0.1 and that works out to be 3.28. So, this is for graphite. this is for graphite. Next we do the same computation for a different volume fraction. So, for V f is equal to 50 percent E t over E m is equal to 1 plus 2 into 19 by 22 into 0 0.5 divided by 1 minus 19 over 22 into 0 0.5 and that comes out to be 1.32 for glass system. Finally, for graphite system when the volume fraction is 50 percent uh, this ratio is 1 plus 2 times 
99 by 102 times 0 0.5 divided by 1 minus 99 by 102 into 0 0.5 and that is equal to 3.83. So, this is graphite. Now, we had done similar calculations for same type of a system earlier also for longitudinal fiber uh, longitudinal modulus. So, what we will do is we will put all these results in a small table and see what we make of it. So, we have two volume fractions V f is equal to 10 percent and the other volume fraction is V f is equal to 50 percent and uh, we have calculated today the parameter E t over E m earlier we had calculated the parameter E l over E m. So, we will list down both these parameters. E L over E M and E T over E M and here again and we had done it for two fiber system uh, uh, fiber metric system one was glass and in this case E F over E M is 20 and the other one was graphite and here E f over E m equals 100. So, now let us write down all the numbers. So, E l over E m is 2.9, this ratio is 1.28, next one is 10.5, third one is 3 for last 3.28 then we have 10.9, 1.32, 50.5 and 3.83. So, this is the overall summary. So, what do we make of it, this table? When we look at this table, we observe several important things. First observation is that if the volume fraction is kept to be constant, then if I increase my fiber modulus significantly in somewhat similar terms, the longitudinal mod modulus also goes up, but not much happens to the transverse modulus. So, the first observation is transverse modulus changes marginally with increasing uh, what do you call E f over E m parameter. I mean you have increased it from 20 to 100 and still the transfer modulus did not go up, but the longitudinal modulus unlike it it goes up significantly, it goes from 2.9 to 10.9. So, roughly more than between 3 and 4 times it goes up by that much. Okay. The other thing to note is that, so the next one is that look at these numbers. So, this is the, the story is same here also from 3.28 to 3.83 here 1.28 to 1.32 not a significant change but longitudinal modulus goes up significantly, it goes up from 2.9 to 10.9 and 10.5 to 50.5. The second thing is if you look at the horizon in the horizontal direction in this direction, in this direction volume fraction is increasing and as volume fraction increases from 10 percent to 50 percent E l over E m again it goes up jumps from 2.9 to 10.5, uh, transverse modulus also increases but that increase is not that strong. Okay. 1.2 to 3.28 is maybe something like two and a half times increase, but 2.9 to 10.5 is an increment of about factor of 
3 to 4. Okay. So, we say that transverse modulus is moderately sensitive, moderately sensitive to changes in volume fraction of the fiber. And then of course, so these are two observations on uh, transverse modulus and the observation on longitudinal modulus is that longitudinal modulus is very sensitive to changes in V f and also in E f over E m ratio. So, this is important to understand. In other words, the transverse modulus is predominantly influenced by the matrix properties, unless the fiber volume fraction is really high 50 percent, 60 percent. It is predominantly influenced by matrix properties. Longitudinal modulus in on the other hand is strongly influenced by the uh, properties of the fiber very strongly. The contribution from fiber is really high on longitudinal modulus side, but it is not that great from uh, fiber side for the transverse modulus. So, this is important to understand as you go around later in this course and as you try to work on composites and if you are interested in increasing the transverse modulus significantly and if the composite is primarily unidirectional in nature, then you should not expect significant payoffs by if you choose a very uh, stiff fiber. What will really help you is that if you choose a very stiff matrix, then that is going to influence your transverse modulus. So, having said that, we will uh, next move to transverse strength. transverse strength. So, in our earlier class, in one of the earlier classes, we had uh, stated that a unidirectional laminate has to be characterized by five different types of strengths. Right? The first strength which we had stated was longitudinal strength in tension, right? longitudinal strength in tension and that we had designated by sigma l meaning longitudinal ultimate strength u and, ten, and this is in tension. The other parameter which we had said was important is longitudinal strength sigma l u, but in compression and that is designated by this apostrophe. The third important property of unidirectional material related to strength is uh, transverse strength sigma t u when the uh, material is subjected to tensile forces. And the fourth one is sigma T u prime, which is the transverse strength in compression. And the last one was shear strength sigma L T u. So, what we will discuss in the next class is sigma uh, transverse strength and specifically we will be talking about this particular parameter. Later in the week, we will also address sigma T u prime and sigma L u prime. Earlier in this course, we have talked about sigma L u, how to predict it. And now, we are going to discuss how to get an estimate on sigma T u. So, with this, I close our discussion for today. We will meet again tomorrow and we will discuss how does transverse strength of uh, these unidirectional composites, it can be estimated and how, uh, what are the important parameters to which it is uh, sensitive to. So, with that I close our discussion and I look forward to meeting you tomorrow. Thank you.